Hello student, I am your SST teacher Jashoda Bistas. Today I am going to deal with you a very important topic, the judiciary. The judiciary, the parliamentary system of government in India has three organs, the legislature, the executive and the judiciary. The legislature frames the law and the executive implements them. The judiciary ensure that people adhere to the law and if there is a dispute, it is resolved according to the laws of the country. The judiciary also protect of the people. The success of the rule of law depends on the independence of the judiciary, treated equally in the eyes of the law. If the custodian of the law, that is, the judiciary can take independent decision according to the laws of the country and it cannot intermediate or influenced by other organ of the government. Now, independent judiciary. Independent judiciary means that the executive and legislature cannot influence the functioning and the decision of the judiciary. Number one point, the constitution has ensured the independence of the judiciary on numbers of measures. The judges do not belong to any political party. A person must be a lawyer to become a judge. He or she also has have to certain basic qualification. His or her political affiliation are not important for his or her selection as a judge. Second point. The position of a judge is permanent. Once he or she is appointed, he or she holds the position till retirement. If he or she misuses his or her power, the parliament can remove him or her through a procedure called impeachment. Third point, the judiciary is not financially dependent on either the executive or the legislature. Network of courts. The judiciary work at different level. At each level, there is a network of courts. If a person is held guilty by a lower court of the country, after a trial, he or she has the right to appeal to the higher court. If he or she feels that he or she has not got justice, this way a case can move from lower court to the highest court, that is the Supreme Court. Now, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the guardian of the constitution and the highest court of appeal. The jurisdiction, function and the responsibilities of the Supreme Court are defined by the constitution. Composition. The head of the Supreme Court is the Chief Justice, who is appointed by President of India. Another 25 judges work with him. They are also appointed by President in consultation with the Chief Justice. Qualification. To become a judge of Supreme Court, person need to have following qualification. Number one. He or she must be a citizen of India. Second, he or she must have at least 10 years experience as an advocate or 5 years experience as high court judge. Number three, he or she may have been a member of distinguished juries. Tenure, the judges of the Supreme Court retire at the age of 65. If they misuse their power, they can be removed by parliament by a process impeachment. Powers of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has a wide range of qualification. Its powers can be broadly categorized. Number one, original jurisdiction, appellate jurisdiction, advisory jurisdiction, supervisory jurisdiction and court of. Now we are going to deal with original jurisdiction. Some cases can only be heard by the Supreme Court. These cases cannot be initiated in any other court. The Supreme Court holds original jurisdiction over such cases. Such cases deals with number one, dispute between the government of India on one side and one or more state on the other. Second, dispute between two or more states. Third, dispute regarding enforcement of fundamental rights. Fourth, Cases under public interest litigation, that is PIL. 
Now, appellate jurisdiction. India, if a person is not happy with the verdict of a lower court regarding constitutional, civil or criminal cases, he or she can appeal against it to the high court. Advisory jurisdiction. The Supreme Court has a special advisory capacity. Sometimes the President might seek to advise of the Supreme Court on matters which involve the public for those which require interpretation of constitution. However, the President is not bound to accept the recommendation of the Supreme Court. Now, supervisory jurisdiction. The Supreme Court oversees and supervises the functioning of the lower court. Now, we are going to deal with court of record. The verdicts and the judgment made by the Supreme Court are kept as record for reference and used by lawyers. Now, high courts. High courts are the highest courts at the same level. They function under the supervision of the Supreme Court. The High Court also exercises different kind of jurisdiction. This include original, appellate and advisory jurisdiction. There are 24 High Courts in India. The seven northeastern states have a single High Court. It's located in Guwahati. Composition A Chief Justice head the High Court. He or she is appointed by the President in consultation with the Chief Justice of India and the Governor of the state. Qualification To be eligible to be a judge of the High Court, a person must be a citizen of India and a High Court advocate for at least 10 years or hold of a judicial office in India for at least 10 years. Tenure. A high court judge hold office till the age of 62 years. If he or she misuses power, he or she can also be removed by the president by the process of impeachment. Subordinate courts. There are courts at the district level that are subordinate to the high court of the state. The court of the district and session judge is the highest court in a district. Revenue court. Revenue courts are those that hear cases which involve the payment of revenue. The highest revenue court in a state is the board of revenue. The highest revenue court in a district is the court of the collector. Naya Panchayat. Naya Panchayat serve as level court minor cases of thief and quarrel. They are a part of Panchayati Raj institution. The members are elected by Gram Panchayat. Now, Lok Adalat. India has had a long history of resolving disputes through the intervention of village elders. Let Adalats are people's court based on Gandhian principle which follow a very simple procedure to settle petty disputes through conciliations and compromise. Civil cases and the criminal cases. Civil cases deals with matters such as property, marriage, inherent of money. Criminal cases deals with Cases of theft, murder, physical injury, and decoity. Thank you. Keep your environment clean, safe, and healthy.